Hold still. There, that ought to do it. Hey, Jack. As soon as we get this claim filed, turn this gold into liquor, huh? <laughs> Hell, I'm not even sure I can drink. My throat's one solid sand dune. <laughs> Good afternoon, stranger. Joe Beadle and Jack Adams. That's right, the Adams brothers. Can we do anything for you? I am your executioner. You want the gold? What are you saying? Shut up! No, the gold does not interest me. Then what do you want? Don't tell me the gold's not enough. Look, I've been telling you I am not interested in your gold. I'm sorry, I'm just here to kill you. Another miner. <laughs> Hold on. This job's extra, Bellman. Better not tell anybody. Mighty sorry about this, mister. Only, I'll have to trouble you for your gold, I'm afraid. Our company is interested in your mine, Mr. Livingston. We can give you a lot of money for it. I'm well aware that when you say a lot of money, you mean very little indeed. No, I'm sorry. I have absolutely no intention of selling the mine. None at all, Mr. Burton. You're free to do whatever you want, but don't think you can hike the price up. My bid is as high as it's ever going to be, Thomas. You never know. Tomorrow, I might not even offer you half. You couldn't even buy it off me for the double. Thanks for the whiskey. Did you do it? No. Ja, 
afternoon, Sheriff. I uh, wanted to turn in these animals. Where did you find them? Oh, a couple of hours from here. And then later, I ran into a pair of men. One of them pointed a gun at me and said he wanted the gold. He uh, didn't get it. So I took their horses and things, and I brought them to you. I see, I see. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe it. I'm sorry about that, but it so happens it's true. Yeah, these belong to the Adamses. Yes, indeed. Yes, they do. I'd recognize them anywhere. Strange. They must have gotten lost. And they let them go. The Adams brothers? What have they got to do with it? What do you mean? I'm telling you, those beasts belong to the Adamses. I sold them to them months ago. They're the two miners. One big and thick in the middle, the other one tall and skinny. Well, the two that jumped me sure didn't look like that. Those were two bandits, not miners. Then they weren't the Adamses. They're miners, like me, not tough men. There's something about this whole business that smells. We better check it out. You come with me, stranger. We'll ride out to where they jumped you. So it's pretty clear. Those two must have been Smith and Jackson. They attacked that stranger on their own. But if the sheriff finds them, it'll be our fault. Curly, get out there and cover things up. No problem. Come on. been here and cleaned everything up. The hell would have bothered doing that. I'm beginning to like this less and less. I know just what you mean. <laughs> Tell me how I look. You'll drive them out of their heads. And how about you? The same? You know by now. You'd better go. They'll be getting impatient, Julie. All right. You jealous? No. <laughs> yes. Two cards. Go see what's One. happening in the other room, will you? Ten.
I'll call. Two pair. Mm. Full house. Why doesn't your luck ever change? Hey, Doc. Too dangerous for no one. Oh, like it's all right, Sidney. Don't worry yourself all sick about it. How about you, Vincent? Afraid not, Thomas. I like my skin. Hey, Billy boy, you feel like going to work for me? No, thanks. Well, I swan there ain't anyone in this town who wants to make himself a little cash. Give me a drink there, Jimmy. Kind of thirsty, yes, sir. Come on, Sheriff. Let me buy you something to drink. Some other time, thanks. Right. Come on, come on. I can't wait all day. <laughs> Just a minute. Throw it out. First of all, you got to pay up your old bill. Then you can start on a new one. Understand? Oh, come on, Jimmy. Just I pay you up. You and me. You know I'll pay yeah. up. What's this all about? Just a little shot of whiskey. Come on, Curly. Just a little shot. What do things coming to around here? It's pretty rotten. Hey, McGregor. Oh, how you been? <laughs> Can't complain. Well, found anything in your mind? No, you're the lucky ones. You got all the men you need. I just got two hands. Oh, hi there, Sonny. You find the Adamses? Well, I looked all day long and couldn't find hide nor hair of them. That's a strange business. It's even giving me a funny tickle in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can take care of that. Come on, I'll buy you something to drink. Two whiskeys. What might your business be, friend? No, don't tell me. You're a prospector. <laughs> I got it right away. I've been looking for that funny yellow stuff for 40 years. Now, I got a little proposition to make. Just a minute. I haven't even said Yeah, that. sure, I know. But first of all, let's empty these little glasses, huh? <laughs> yeah. You want a drink? Pay your bill. Excuse me, friend. I'm standing him that drink. Oh! 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 
My brother's out on a visit, but he should come back soon. It's not important. I don't think I need to see him. It's not serious, but you should have it looked at. Would you like a glass of whiskey? Oh, the magic word. Well, only a tiny drop. I wouldn't want to impose. <laughs> you want to know something, Molly. If I was 30 years younger, I'd... You'd sweep me off my feet and carry me away? You mean I already told you? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the doctor. Evening, Doc. Hi, Doc. Evening, Thomas. Evening. He got this in that saloon brawl. Very nice job, Molly. Looks fine. <laughs> A hot drop of liquor in the morning is just the thing to warm up the bones and clear the mind. Is your arm still bothering you, Sonny? No, it's on the mend, all right. By the way, that man in the bar, who was he? Who? You know, the one with the pipe. Never saw him before in my life. I'd like to thank him. Don't bother. I believe in the law. The law that says that you can do anything as long as you get away with it. On the other hand, there are people who spend their lives scratching mountains looking for gold. I'm a bounty hunter, if you want to know. From what I just overheard the two of you talking about, this territory looks like pretty good pickings. Well, the bait's there, and it's damn good looking. That's right. Gold! Those McGregor's over at the next field really got lucky with that new vein they found. I'm glad for them. They're nice people. Hey, there they are. Boys, this is Johnny McGee. How are you? How do? Finally found someone to help me at the mine. I'm glad to hear it, Thomas. We bring the change of luck for you. Hey, Evelyn, how are you? Pretty good, Thomas. Thank you. Nice little thing, isn't it? Not bad at all. <laughs> yes, sir. Must be about half an Not hour. You don't find them like that every day. Uh, Beauty, that's what it is. Oh, yes, sir, that's a nice little rock. Like that. We've Wouldn't found one like, like it for the last <laughs> three days. I should Can't say complain. not. Ooh, it looks nice and heavy. Yeah, so far we've had a pretty decent day. the time burrowing underground like moles. If only something would come of it. Oh well, one day it will. Hey, these beams are getting into pretty rotten shape. If one of them gives in, we'll have to start all over again from the beginning. Uh, who would ever have thought that I, Thomas Nathaniel Livingston, would have to dig for years and years and never find anything. Some people, when they're born, just open their eyes and find they're rich. And I'm going to be closing mine pretty soon. And still nothing. I suppose, I suppose it's right what they say. A man can be born good looking and tall and clever. But if he ain't born with luck, forget it. Yes, sir. Still working, Johnny? No trying, Thomas. Uh. Uh. Tired, Johnny? Nope. I don't suppose you found anything. Just keep on digging, boy. And keep on finding stones, huh? I've been digging out this tunnel for seven years. I ain't found a thing. Huh. I'm glad you said so. Why not sell it, then? Because I'm too clever. This is the richest mine in the territory. Because everyone wants it. <laughs> you can't put one over on this old goat. You stay on with me, you'll make yourself a fortune, I'm telling you. Well, you better get back to work, Johnny. You can always count on me, Doc. At what price? 
We'll see. You understand, Doctor, everything can be arranged. For example, your sister could become Mrs. Burton, my wife. I begin to see. So you would be my brother-in-law. So your obligations... I'll pay off everything. I told you. Really, there'd be no more need. We'd just be keeping everything in the family, Doc. You made yourself perfectly clear. I'll talk it over with her. No, not enough, I'm sorry. You'll have to convince her. All right, I will. <laughs> that sounds like a marvelous idea, Johnny. Oh, Doc, Mr. McGee's here. Morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Burton. He's come to get some of Thomas's medicine. Is it ready? I'll make it up right away. McGregor's have really struck it rich. Oh, look! Hey, what's all this about, Jim? What's the matter, Mac? The price of gold. Last time it was a dollar more. It's just a new price, Mac. Who said it should be lowered? Burton. You know, at San Antonio, it's five dollars more an ounce. Hmm. Long trip, let us start. Thanks, Jim. Over 300 miles each way. Two weeks going fast. Well? Weigh it. Yeah, my boy. What keeps them from selling their gold in San Antonio? It's not worth the trouble, the time they lose, the two weeks trip, and besides the risks of carrying a load of gold all that far. And so Mr. Burton wins again. That's right. He's a pretty smart man, is Burton. That's right. So far, he's managed to get his hands on three of the best mines in the territory. And by the way, all done above board and legal. All bite. How did he do it? This first one, he won at poker. The other two owners got killed in the fight. All legal. Burton bought them at an auction, I'll He bet. was the only one there for the bidding. Ah, boys, this Burton is one guy who's full of luck. As far as I'm concerned, he finds too many ways of being lucky. Thank you. 
Who am I supposed to kill now? The McGregor brothers. No, not anymore. I'm tired of killing. Only the McGregors, Lupe. That's what you said about the Adams. You want to wind up hanging? It would be better than living like this. Then choose. Either I tell the sheriff where you are. No. Or you kill the McGregors for me. No, no. Then I'll let you go back to Mexico. No. No! 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 Martinez. Come on, Lupe. Got him. He won't go far. I have the sensation that I'm just part of the furniture in this room. You're not. You seem a bit sad. Are you moved by the miners' complaints? You know people like that are never happy. They say your company's prices are killing them. They'll be starving if you go on like that.
you mad at me too? Don't be silly. Now we know who our man is, gents. Every able-bodied man in this town better plan to start moving out soon. Our father was killed when a mine shaft caved in. He was very well liked in this county. Why, when my brother got his degree, there were a lot of people who pretended to be sick just to help us. Do you think you'll be stopping long here? Well. Thomas is so excited, it's contagious. <laughs> I've been watching him dig that mine since I was a little girl. He's never brought out a thing. But the land, there's got to be gold in it. And besides, there's something in this area that makes me want to stay a while. I've run out of some of the compounds I need. As a matter of fact, Thomas, since you're going into the village, could you pick them up for me? Why, sure, Doc. Be glad to. Fine. I'll make you out a list. Oh, by the way, I uh, haven't got any money right now. I was wondering if you could pick them up and let me pay you back later. Ah, no problem, Doc. I can always sign for them. That's fine. Thanks, Thomas. The two of you come back and see us soon again. We're terribly fond of old Thomas. Hmm. You just want to see old Thomas? I don't really believe you, my dear. You've added line to your other vices. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas! Thomas! Afternoon, Isaac. What's up, youngster? We've done it. Probably the best vein of gold ever seen in the county. That's great. I'm happy for you. Thomas, listen. You better come and see it. I need your advice. Why, sure. Glad to. Be seeing you, Johnny. All right. So long. So long. So we dug out this tunnel for about 20 yards. We were just about to give it up when we struck. Works out as good as it looks. We'll all be rich for life. Going hunting, Ted? Yeah. I have an idea where to find Lupe Martinez's tracks. You know, it's a mighty pleasant day. It's worth the trouble to look. Good luck. Take that. Looks like they struck gold. We better get rid of them. Yeah, but we can have some fun first.
Someone coming! I'd like some news about Burton, Sheriff. How long has he been in town? About five years. In that time, he's made a fortune. He does pretty much what he wants to, right? Well, the people let him. How about you? I just represent the law here. I got no business dealing with him. Ever had a complaint filed against him? No, never. And where he comes from, no one knows. Five years and a lot of money. A little bit too easy. Know anything? No proof, so no use even talking about it. For now. I've had a nice jail cell ready for Mr. Burton for some time now. Bring me one piece of proof. Just one. Very nice. Hi, Andrew. Believe me, Johnny, I've never heard tell of a vein like that around here. You're going to make a fortune. Can you imagine how unbearable old Thomas is going to be? <laughs> Here's to you. And Thomas. Thanks. We had a meeting with the other miners who want to go to San Antonio to sell their gold and to ask for federal troops. We'll get rid of Burton once and for all. I've got to talk to you. 
We'll continue this later. Sir. Very good, sir. Old Thomas has found gold. It looks to be the richest vein in the area. Hmm. I'm very happy for him. That's not all I came to tell you. There's something even worse. The miners are saying they're going to unite. They're going to sell their gold in San Antonio. What's more, they'll be asking the government for troops. Anthony, they hate you. They're on to you now. We've no other way out. Let's go away, please. Don't worry about it. Every bit of gold is in a safe place. The gold. Always the gold. Once he used to talk about a house, about children. Were they just empty promises? We often say things we mean at the time. I'm tired. I want to leave this place with you. I haven't finished here yet. You're not the same man I knew once. In that case, my dear, you're at liberty to leave if you wish. Anthony. It's Molly, isn't it? It's possible, I suppose. Careful of what you do, Anthony. Do you hear? getting late. Why don't you go to sleep? I'm almost finished. What is it? You look so strange. Oh, nothing. Guess what? I was out walking with Johnny. That's nice. He asked me to marry him. And so I said yes. Yes what? I said I would. He says he has to ask your permission. But that's nonsense. What's nonsense? For me to marry? Not at all, just... I've already given my word to Burton, you see. He's the proprietor of a big mining cartel. Has a great deal of influence. He's very important. And he loves you. So what? So the man asked me for your hand. I wouldn't dream of it. Marry that man? Molly, I gave him my word. You gave him your word, Doc, not mine. I wouldn't marry Burton if you were the last man on Earth. But Molly... I must say, for an intelligent man, you can be pretty stupid. Afternoon, Doc. Beautiful tone, isn't it, Doc? There isn't an instrument like it in the States. It cost me an incredible amount. <laughs> and on top of that, with what it cost to have it brought here, I could have torn down the saloon and built it all over again. Look, I, I just came over to tell you I'm afraid there's no way to do it. Doc, with money you can do anything. No, I'm afraid I don't agree, Bert. So she said no, did she? I did my very best, Burton. I'm sure you did. She just needs time, Doc. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. No, I don't think so. After all, I know her pretty well. She's my sister. And besides... Huh? She's in love with someone else. I think I understand. Someone who doesn't have a cent. 
In a few years, she'll be an old woman wallowing in diapers and a hundred brats. My hands are tied. I believe you gave up too quickly, Doctor. You don't know the fair sex. The important thing is that you believe in my sincerity. I want the best for your sister. I have no idea what to do. We'll find a solution. I'm a long way from giving up. Go relax at the poker table. No, I can't. Thanks very much. Go ahead. I can't accept it anymore. Come on, I won't go bankrupt over this. Don't worry, Doc. Who knows? Maybe Lady Luck will be sitting beside you tonight. Lady Luck and I have never been very close friends. I don't believe in her. You must always believe, Doc. If you just have confidence, you'll be lucky. evil left in this. Come on. To bed. You know old folks don't need much sleep. Just sitting there. I was happy. Thomas. You're a bully. You're a nice lad, but you're a big bully. Just a little shot to celebrate the event. Just go on. Go to sleep. Come on. Go to sleep. Thomas. Out of a rich Johnny boy, I want to buy a bed, a feather bed, with curtains all around. on fire. Thomas! Wake up! Wake up, will you? What? The cabin's on fire! Uh, you're right! Stop! It's a trap, Thomas! Thomas! Bastard! Let's get moving. Thomas! 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 That's over, just sign the paper. Yep, that's perfect. Now remember, Judge, just as soon after the funeral as you can. Don't think you're getting out of this world so easily, my boy. You're like a cat, you got nine lives. 
Yeah, maybe. But eight of them are used up already. Just in time for the last one. I'll see you later. You can go in. Gather in your arms the soul of your devoted son, Thomas Nathaniel Livingston, and that you allow him blessed rest for all eternity. Amen. Well, Mr. McGee, I'll expect you in my office tonight at 10.30. Is that all right? Judge. Come on in. Thank you. <coughs> May I help you in some way? I wanted to know when the sale would take place. The sale of the mine, Port Thomas's. I'm sure you agree with me that the sale should be put on as fast as formalities permit. And if you think it necessary, you can close the auction. Do you understand? You're trying to bribe me, aren't you, Burton? All right, I admit it. Are you incorruptible? You must be aware of what the consequences could be, aren't you? Oh, certainly. I'd be sent to the state prison. But the other one gets sent underground. Attempted bribery and threats. Well, one might work. I must say, it's your good luck that it can't be put to the test, Burton. Thomas Livingston left a fully legal will here. You may look it over yourself if you like. I have no objections. Actually... You can be a witness when I read it shortly to the only heir. Anything to help the law, Judge. It's John, sir. May I come in? Judge? I can see it, Sheriff. It must have been someone from out of town. If that's the case, what in hell was their motive? You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. It came from in there. Stay right there. Don't move, Johnny. Hand me the gun, boy. I didn't kill the judge. I hope you believe that, Sheriff. The will's disappeared, Johnny. And that doesn't help your case. But the judge had made an appointment with me. He said there was something in Thomas's will he wanted to talk about. That's all. The charge is that you killed the judge and stole the will so as to stay the only proprietor of the gold mine. But I didn't have any reason to. You know that he and I were partners. Yeah, you took 10%. Thomas also was supposed to have a son around somewhere. So it all would have gone to him. 
I didn't kill anyone. Besides being of totally different calibers, one of these bullets is completely unmarked, while the other one has a circular mark about halfway down. So they came from different guns. So you mean the bullet that murdered the judge wasn't fired from Johnny's weapon? If you're positive that particular gun belongs to Johnny, and this is the bullet the doctor pulled out of the judge's body, then Johnny didn't kill anybody. Sent for us, Burton. I want Johnny McGee gotten rid of. And this time, no mistakes. Understand? It's as good as done. All right, boys, we're going to have a little fun tonight. You get in the other room. Come on, get moving. Everyone outside. Aren't you supposed to be downstairs? What for? Everyone's gone. This thing is going to backfire. Your opinions have no meaning. Thinking we're in for an active night, Sheriff, eh? We're better off taking no chances. I'm not looking forward to tonight. start moving. And over the prisoners, Sheriff. You better be pretty careful, Curly. That man doesn't need a trial. Just a sentence. That's all. Looks like you picked a lawman to fight. We got our own law, Sheriff. It's a pretty powerful one. You can believe it. I thought something like this might happen, so I sent word to the Rangers. Prisoners in my own personal custody. Come on. 
Knock the door down. Pull the door, Sheriff. You live through this one, McGee. Put some muscle into it. Don't sit on top of it. known as Anthony Burton is actually named Manuel Santana and is a partner of Lupi Martinez. I learned this fact by finding a reward poster with his real name on it. I swear that this is the truth. Confirm this? I confirm it. Will you sign here, please? Then I guess you'll be going. Tomorrow morning. Here's another bottle, Doc. Anthony, I brought a warrant. You're under arrest. Is that so? And we'll make it stick, mister. You're accused of being an accomplice in the act of murder. Murder of the Adamses, the Schillers, the McKennas, and their two children. Also for the murder of old McGregor, Thomas Livingston, and Judge O'Keefe. All with the aim of taking over the mines in this territory. Strange, nothing more. Yes, there's plenty, believe me. You're already under sentence of death for several crimes committed while you were still using your real name, Manuel Santana. You're coming into custody now. All right. I'm waiting. And the proof? Your woman, Julie, confessed. <laughs> Who listens to women's chatter? Start moving, Santana! Look out, Sheriff!
Johnny! Johnny Burton! He killed my brother and the sheriff! <laughs> we'll get him. <laughs> over there, Joe in front. You two by the window. Everything's ready. Take a couple of the boys and have a look outside. Nobody's shooting them. I don't trust it. Go on. Sal, over here. You on the other side. Al and Ted, by the window. Bob, here. You in the corner. Jack, here. Come on, let's get moving. it out between them. Come on, Curly. Gold dust. Burton was here. And he didn't leave long ago. Let's get moving.
right, Burton? The saddlebags. We're going separate ways from now on. The saddlebags. At least give me the papers. You don't need them. Stand up slow, Burton. Give up, it's no good. Don't bother shooting, he's gone toward Indian Cave. Still alive. Never saw anything like it. Hmm. Damn if I know how he's lasted this long.
Lupe, hurry up. We're going to take the gold and run to Mexico. Lupe, hurry, come on. The gold. That's right, the gold, our gold. Let's go, Lupe. Far away. They're following me, Lupe. There's no time to lose. Manuel Santana. This is how I wanted you. Licking my boots and begging at my feet. <laughs> Crazy Lupe, we'll take the gold we've hidden in here and we'll go. We'll go to Mexico. Ah, oh, forget about it. You'll never get that gold. <laughs> you blackmailed me. You made me suffer for years. Let's go, Lupe. Wait. Wait, Manuel Santana. Now we settle things. Now you will pay. You will pay for everything I've gone through because of you. I waited for you, you know. I waited to get you before I died. It's over, Manuel. What are you thinking of doing? I'm going to kill you. That's what I'm going to do, to kill you. You're out of your mind. You're crazy. You are going to find out just how crazy I am. You'd better not try. Don't try it, Lupe. I'm warning you. Lupe, this time you won't make it. I think I will. I will. Stop it! Lupe, stop it! <laughs> Yes, darling. That's quite a way to earn a living. <laughs> Look at him. Everything settled? You sure you don't want to divide this with me, Johnny? Mm-mm. Okay. Thanks for everything. Thank you. And good luck. You know, someday you get tired of playing that penny whistle. There's a job for you here in the mine if you want it. I'll remember that. <laughs> 